Alright guys, Touch Crab here today, recapping a hectic day one of action of the CWL Pro League Qualifier. So many upsets all over the place, we're going to be going through it all today. So like if you enjoy, subscribe if you are new as always. We're closing in on 7,500, which would be a nice goal to hit by, you know, the end of this weekend. So let's go through it all today. Firstly, I do want to touch on the patch notes that came out before this event, just to go through it very briefly. So... Uh, yeah, just to touch on it, just to get this news out of the way. So, Hardpoint and Search and Destroy had a couple of little changes. There is now an overtime win condition in Hardpoint where usually if the map would be a draw, like tied 214 to 214 with the time running out, it will go to the next tick that happens. So, usually the way it would work is because now if you're in the hill and no one else controls it, then the time doesn't count down. The only way this would happen is if the hill is contested or there's no one in the hill and it's currently a draw and usually the time would be running out but now it just holds on until someone scores the next point so basically whoever wins the next set of gunfights wins which i think is a good change overall even though crim6 i don't think fully understood it at the time then search and destroy resolved an issue that allowed defenders to defuse and win the game after the bomb had detonated i don't know if you'd seen this but there's some situations where the bomb detonates and it is diffused at basically the same time and now they're going to give that to the attacking side so if it explodes they always win the round then there's another couple of changes, or at least down here in the custom game section. Resolved an issue where Codcaster spectating would disable a player's perks and second equipment charge. This is what pros were talking about in control, when their perks would just disappear. Apparently it was an issue with Codcaster spectating, so that should have changed now. And now, resolved an issue where second equipment charge bar would not show in custom game, so I guess that's a good change. Let's get on to the actual matches, because core blimey was this a crazy one so these are the pools i think the way i'll go through this is to go through the schedule as it is here and then at the end of this video i will go through some of the predictions i have for tomorrow's matches so yeah first of all face clan face clan black this was basically a blowout Selium and zuma or well Selium and zuma went off Selium in his first ever life on land got full streaks he got full streaks again in, in like later in the series or later in the same map as well like they completely blew out phase black who were expected to do something rather good but this series wasn't close at all Selium and zuma absolutely went off in the very first map and Selium went like 31 and 8 in his first map on land it's not bad is it LP Heretics. Now, this is where things got super interesting because I was expecting Heretics to make it or to make the league, but I didn't think they'd get top two. And LP, I did think it would get top two coming top six of Vegas. They get beaten 3 1 by Heretics. Heretics won every single respawn, and their, you know, LP's surge was the only map they won. Pretty scary because if Heretics are winning respawns against decent teams like LP, that really does set a precedent. I don't know whether that's LP underperforming or Heretics just being unbelievable. Probably a bit of both. They're both practicing in the European region. They won't have played each other online at least recently, but they definitely are practice partners going back a fair bit. And yeah, that seems pretty ominous for LP going forwards. Okay, there's definitely some other teams that took some worse losses here. So LP could easily bounce back. Sween take down Divine 3-0 in their first series. Team Divine should be the punching bag, really of pool a everyone else is so good that this is basically expected fact revolution 3-0 tater mind this is actually rather surprising to me fact revolution is sunny b's team with like cami mvp and those guys on it you know i wasn't expecting them to make much noise in pool b here but damn tater mines a lot of people didn't expect this team to be particularly good they did get that one three two win on luminosity online uh, but it clearly hasn't translated to land if they're getting three by fact revolution this series in Pool D was one of the picks of the bunch for the day, EG versus Mindfreak, because I was expecting Pool D to be relatively easy to call. I thought, okay, EG and Red, they'll be top two in some fashion or other. Uyu will be there and thereabouts as well. And then after that, you'll probably have Mindfreak and then the other guys lower down. Wow. Well, we'll go through that in uh, as the time progresses. EG, Mindfreak. EG go up. Map number one, they go up 100 to zero in the first seaside half point. It's looking like a walk in the park when my freak bring it back, they bring it back, and we get another absolute classic seaside harbour when my freak win by like 10 points or something like that, make a stupidly good comeback to win map number one. Then they take map two convincingly, EG win the control, and then EG win map four, 250 to like 50. It's a blowout. But this my freak squad, even though it's different now, you've got Beast and you've got Luca, you've got Swifty on the team. They always have a crazy mental resilience where, like, even if they've got blown out, they can just straight up reset. 
and they reset really quickly and win the map five to BEG, which is just a massive upset in the context of the pool. Talking of upsets, man, 100 Thieves, baby, versus Midnight Gaming. This was tragic to watch. First map, 250 to like 200. Like, I already knew this was going to be going bad at that point. And then in the search, they got 6-1 on Hacienda. And then they lost the control 3-0, I think. Or at least they got destroyed in the control. They had a 9-3 advantage in one of the control rounds. Threw it away. And yeah, 100T just looking all over the place in that matchup. And it takes an incredible... You know, an incredible story later on in the day to even get them a win on the board. But that series was mental. Midnight were looking good to their credit, like Parzelion on the crew. But Jesus, that was a tough loss for 100 Thieves to take. Definitely one they shouldn't have taken. And yeah, they, they really need a reality check, I guess. Spacely as well get 3-0'd by Overtime. This was, when I heard this was happening, I was like, what is going on? I didn't give Overtime enough credit, I will say in the predictions video I did, because two of these guys, their French team, were on the Vitality squad, I think, that was in the Pro League last season, so definitely deserve some credit, but a 3-0 spacely like that is crazy. Whaler's obviously a really talented player, Nache and Breezy, I, I like watching them play as well, but a 3-0 spacely team really set a precedent here, like, look at these two matches in Pool C, that is just a crazy one. Uyu versus Imperial, like, it's just upsets galore here. These four matches in a row were just crazy, because Uyu, I thought, would come solid second. Imperial, yeah, decent team, some of the old Epsilon core, but I didn't really think they'd be good enough to make it. They beat Uyu map, map 5. 3-2, it wasn't even particularly close, map 5 as well, Moose was going off. Like, what a crazy turn of events that is. I was like, okay, so Uyu, maybe they're not the force to be reckoned with. I thought they were. Maybe it will be should be easier for Red Reserve. I didn't think Imperial were particularly good even after this victory, but we'll see how that went later on. Sween versus Reciprocity. This was another absolute classic. EG versus Mindfreak had a fantastic Seaside Hardpoint map one. This one eclipsed it. Sween were up like 230 to 120, something like that, similar to the Optic versus E United game that I broke down a couple of days ago. And Reciprocity, they bring it back, they bring it back. They hit all the rotations perfectly. Sween, honestly, yes, they threw it away, but they did make the right plays. They didn't try and flood in individually to the final Fountain Hill. They were waiting for each other. They knew they only had one push. And, okay, it didn't work out for them. Reciprocity made the comeback. And I, I think they kind of, you know... I don't really think Team Sween lose full, per se. I don't think they particularly... I don't think they lack composure. I definitely think they have composure. Yes, you may be say, okay, well, they just lost a crazy comeback, but and then they went on to lose a series convincingly. I think that was more just the momentum in Reciprocity's favour. They they were crazy hyped over that map number one, and they didn't let the foot off the gas at all. 6 would the search, 3 would the control. Like, Sween just got absolutely blown out, and it's really scary... Uh, maybe not for Sween. I, th I think Sween is still decent. They are 1-0 in the pool. Versus Phase and Enigma 6 is going to be very interesting. But versus Reciprocity, they got absolutely destroyed. And Rec looking super dangerous, especially with Shawnee on that Maddox more often. He did not miss a single bullet in that control map, I swear. Heretics Giants, they take the 3-0 in the Spanish derby. No problem at all. That was relatively convincing. And then Project 18 lose to Phase Clan Black, which is... Teddy Rex's team losing to someone who got 3 0 by face. So maybe there actually is a fair bit of class difference in this pool lay when we go through it. G2 take down Tater minus 3 1, no problem at all. Pittsburgh beat Mazer 3 0. Slightly unfortunate on the Mazer half, of course, they don't have supreme agility. I talked about that yesterday. XLG Midnight was a 3 2 in the end. I think this is a reverse sweep. XLG is fast ballers team, BZ's team. And it was crazy when XLG went up 2 0 on the team that had just. 3 0 100 Thieves, but Midnight do bring it back and win 3 2, so they're definitely a force to be reckoned with in the pool. Mind Freak take down Nation of Power 3 to 1. Didn't really get too much of a chance to watch these series. A lot of these are uh, off stream, you know. Then you have Imperial versus Mother Star Riders, and Pool D is just so crazy. Like, let's have a look at this for just one second here. Do you lose to Imperial 3 2, and then Imperial get 3 2 by Mother Star Riders who would probably would be considered the third, maybe the second best Spanish team. There's three of them here. Heretic's definitely the best. Then it's, I guess it's between Movistar and Giants for that second place. But to beat Imperial here in a game five is, I think, probably an upset. Yes, Imperial not considered to be too good, but with that win over Uyu, I thought they have a fantastic chance. But Movistar just clutching up in these game fives, and they do it again later in the night. Envy vs G2 is a damn big series. This was a fun one to watch. Envy get the better of them. So, yeah, I'm happy that Envy are looking good. G2 were uh, maybe 
my slight favourites going into this one, but Method hasn't looked incredibly good so far when you've put him in this LAN environment. Lacefield's still been decent, but regardless. Envy win map number one, relatively convincingly. It was a series of relatively convincing maps. Envy won map one, like, 250-150. And they lost six, they lost, like, 6-1 in the search. Control, I think, was relatively convincing for them. There was this interesting, maybe, controversy, because Aix used his War Machine to clutch a one versus two. And I'm not sure whether it's a feature or a glitch, but because he, you know, he hadn't used the whole thing and he still had it in his hands when the round was finished, he got, like, a very large progression towards it again. So in the very next round, he got the War Machine again and was able to use it to get another three-piece to win in the game. And then G2 won map number four. Going on to map number five, Envy won it convincingly. Maybe Bevel's in that coaching role with some search and destroy strats on Gridlock because that was a pretty convincing one. Phase E6 was crazy as well. E6 actually decimated in this series. Frosty was looking really, really good. Kismet was on fire. Diabolic was playing really well. And this just shows how scary this pool A is. Because damn, if Phase are able to look so good against Phase Black and they're going to get blown out by E6 like this. Okay, it wasn't necessarily a blowout. The maps were relatively close. They lost to Control, I think, to the Enigma 6. But overall, E6 definitely looked like the better team, and they won both hard points in a series, and usually that indicates who the better team is for sure. Project 18 take down Divine 3-1, Factor Revolution 3-0 Giants, so Sunny B's team looking really, really good in Pool B for now. Whether they'll get all the way, who knows? Unlikely, but they may well make it to the bracket. Space vs. 100 Thieves, probably the series of the day. This was a match between two teams that were 0-1 that were not expected to be by any means. And the loser of this goes 0-2, which is a very difficult situation to recover from. Let's go through it. Spacey's team win map number 1. 100 Thieves looking pretty lost again, losing hard points relatively convincingly. Then map 2, they actually clutch up a little bit. Kenny gets streaks. They take it all the way to around 11 where they end up winning. So massive result there. Going on to the control, 100 Thieves took it relatively convincingly, I think, before Spacey then one map number four to take it to a game five. Game five, Gridlock SMD. Space Lee's team goes up 5-1. Some crazy cool plays in there as well where Space Lee's team like triggered a rotation. They baited him out. Space Lee was effectively the bait for this play but still got four kills out of it somehow, which was crazy. Down 5-1. I'm not sure the player exactly, but I think it was Havoc who had full streaks. They had all their specialists ready to go. And I've never seen them throw it away any harder. It was so close. 100 Thieves actually managed to clutch up some crazy rounds. There was 1v1s, 1v2s, either way that people were trying to win. It was a very intense matchup, and I've no idea how Spacey's team managed to throw it away. They throw all their streaks away, they throw their specialists away, and then 100 Thieves get them on their back. They get the bomb down at B, and that round is just done. Such a tragic way to lose for Spacely's team. Definitely a chance they still qualify, but 100 Thieves, I feel like they really needed that to get some confidence playing, to get some belief back in their system that they can actually win this. Then the next match, Red versus Uyu, an absolute classic. I mentioned this in my storylines video, that Uyu always seem to have Red Reserve's number, and they do it again, man. It doesn't make any sense. Red managed to win the control, I think, but every other map was won by Uyu. There was a little bit of controversy over this. Rated did tweet this, of course. He loves giving excuses and stuff on Twitter, but if this one is true, then it's definitely warranted. So, yeah, it doesn't help that lost both hard point breaks because they got a stun, and because we, uh, but we didn't get given trophies, and they got streaks off the break of both hard points. And, yeah, Rated reckons there's a glitch where you can guarantee to get stuns, and that's what they've done. So, it's an interesting one because... I th I'm not even sure because Ake says here like it's completely random whether if even if you run double stuns you don't always get it which is frankly ridiculous because how powerful stuns are in this game and how important they are and if there's some glitch to guarantee them and the opposing team can't guarantee that they're going to get trophies to stop them then that's some crazy imbalance that needs to be sorted out right now in addition to the imbalance you get naturally when teams spawn closer or further away from a particular hill. So, difficult start for Red. Like, it doesn't make any sense, man. Movistar Riders beat Imperial, who beat Uyu, who beat Red. Like, how does this make any sense? Hopefully Red will bounce back. Looking for them to do so. Wouldn't be surprised if they did. XLG take down overtime in a map 5. So, yeah, the French guys couldn't keep it going. And then Movistar Riders win another game 5 against Nation of Power. I think this was a reverse sweep. 
So vamos, ladies and gentlemen. So that's the results from day one. This is what the pools look like right now. If it ended today, yeah, Reciprocity, Enigma 6, Fact Revolution and Heretics, Midnight Esports, Pittsburgh and Mind Freak and Movistar Riders of all teams would go through to Pro League automatically. Another couple of days down the line, we'll see how things are shaping up from here, but a pretty crazy one. Don't really have too much time to go through some predictions, but I'll just show you the matches while they're sitting here right now. So these are the ones, 7 hours 50 from when I'm recording this in the matches. They start the same time as yesterday. They will be at the Twitch link in the description box below. And yeah, these are all the games if you want to look through some. Reciprocity versus Enigma 6 is a big one. FaZe even versus Teddy Rex's team could be a could be a good one as well. Maybe LP can get this victory over Giants, which will set them up rather nicely. G2 Factor Revolution could be interesting if Factor Revolution have been performing as well as we think they have. Maybe Heretics can get an upset over Envy. Sween definitely need this win over over FaZe Black right here. And Reciprocity should have a relatively easy match against Divine to set them up nicely. EG Reds may well be the pick of the bunch here because both teams lost a series on day number one. That sets it up very interesting because whoever loses this is potentially at risk of not making the top two. So definitely something to consider. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new. I'll cover this tomorrow as well. May not be as early though because I do have an exam tomorrow. So I'll probably be making this recap video later in the day. But it will still come out at some point. So thank you guys so much for watching as always and I'll see you next time.